Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm really excited for today's video because today is all about realistic Wing Chun. So what do I mean by that? What I'm referring to is training with the mindset of reality. So anytime you execute your technique, you want to do it with proper intent proper distance, proper force. So that way your body and your mind gets used to that type of training. Because as we all know, if ever you need to fight, if ever you need to protect yourself, you don't have a warning, you have to learn to react. And how do you react? You react with just habits. So in order for you to build good habits, you need to train with reality in mind. So guys, let us not waste time, let's get started. Okay guys, so for the first technique, I want to discuss the thrusting punch, the Yat Chi Chong Choi. See, when punching, you always have to have in mind that the person you're fighting with will not just stay still. They're not gonna be just standing there for you to punch them. They're gonna be moving into you, away from you, and they're also gonna try and hit you back. So anytime you execute the technique, you want to be as effective as possible because you may only have one chance. Okay, now, if Brendan and I are fighting and he's on his guard and he launches his punch, so let's say he's punching. Now, I can go over it, I can go under it, I can slip, I can do all sorts of different things. But when I make contact, what happens next? If you're just used to punching the air or just punching very light targets, let's say open hand and you're just punching light targets, what happens when you're punching a strong guy? Will your wrist collapse? Are you really conditioning your arm, your wrist, and your fist for impact? So that is what this video is all about. Just trying to make you aware of all these different elements. Because if I am fighting with Brendan, and let's say I want to go under his punch. He's punching, I go under. And then, once I make contact, I know he's got this other hand there ready to go. He may also have that leg ready to go. So when I step in, I need to be as effective as possible when connecting the punch and then figure out, am I going to follow up? Am I going to step away, counterattack, run away? All these different things you need to consider when training. Okay guys, technique number two. This time we're working on the kick, the front kick. Now, at our school, the way I learned from my C4 is thrusting. It's like a push kick, okay? I know many Wing Chun practitioners out there don't execute the kick this way. Now, the reason why we do is because, once again, if I'm dealing with a strong guy and this guy is coming with his punch to my face and he really wants to knock me out, he's gonna come in and he's really gonna press, put all his body weight behind the punch. Now let's say instinctively I thought of kicking him. So when he's coming, I just raise the leg, but he's pushing me through because he's really trying to chop my head off with that punch. And keep in mind, many times it's not just the one punch. There are multiple punches, kicks, things happening. And what happens if there's a guy behind you or he's with a friend right there? So you need to be as effective as possible when kicking. So if he comes at me, I can't just raise the leg to stop him because he outweighs me. He's bigger than me. So if he really comes at me and I'm kicking, he's going to push me off balance. So when executing the kick, when you're training, you need to think of these possible scenarios and thrust, like really push the hip forward. Now, I'm demonstrating just here towards the midsection. He comes at me, I can easily do the same thing towards the knee, okay? He can't reach me, I can reach him. I can break that knee if I needed to. Great. Third technique, Tan Sao. Everyone and their grandma knows the Tan Sao in the Wing Chun community. Now, how you execute the Tan Sao can really give you the outcome that you want or it'll get you in trouble. Because, see, the way you want to execute the Tan Sao 
is the way where you're first covering, right? Taking care of yourself. Then, as the name says, a dispersing hand, tan sao, disperse the attack, then counterattack. I could be dealing with someone shorter than me, taller than me, longer reach. If Brendan fully extends his arm, right, and he can reach my face, and let's say I'm trying to do a tan sao, and he bends that elbow, and I'm trying to go here, and he reaches me, especially, again, guys, think of power. If he's coming at me really swinging wild, and I try to intercept, this may not cut it. This may not stop that possible wild hook. So how can you stop it? Not following a, a specific part of the arm, but just covering where you're exposed. If this guy wants to punch me here, I need to put the tansal where it intercepts that attack. And the height of my tansal has to be in the strongest structure possible. And then, of course, the horse and hip and shoulder. Because that's the only way, if you put all these elements together, it can become a very effective technique. We've got other techniques that we would use against wild hooks, but this is a fundamental one, and you want to get very effective practicing it. Okay guys, so that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please click the like button, share it with a friend. And guys, don't forget to check out some of my other videos. There's plenty of material there to keep you busy training and taking your Wing Chun to the next level. If you haven't already, check out my online academy. It's umauniversity.com.au. There's a free introductory applied Wing Chun course you can check out and learn from those videos as well. Having said that, I'll see you in the next one.